I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Jassy, and I want to introduce him first. Um, some of you might have met Dr. Jassy as you were milling beforehand, and it's absolutely first class that we've been able to, uh, well, Dr. Jassy has come and joined us for this launch. I think it demonstrates the strength of what we have, because we have all the key players in, in the room now, and I can tell you, when we apply for grants and the same, we do the same. We field our key players, and we've done quite well. Dr. Jassy has come from Ghana to be with us. He's the director of the training school in Kintampo. He's been at the training school for how many years is that? Six years. Ten. Ten years. And uh, the training school is well established. It's been there for some 40 years now, I believe. Dr. Jass is a physician by background, uh, a public health physician. I think it's great to hear then, it'll be great to hear now directly from Dr. Jassy about the work that we've been doing and about the, the, the way it feels at the Ghanaian end and the things which we can try to continue doing to help. Dr. Jassy, would you come up? Thank you very much, Mark, and thank you all for coming. In fact, I'm short of words. And, um, but first and foremost, I'm highly privileged to be part of this historic event taking place this afternoon in such a nice weather, anyway. Um, <laughs> before I start, uh, let me say a big thank you to all of you for finding time to be here and for supporting our uh, webby course. Otherwise, you wouldn't have spent your time being here this morning. But let me bring you greetings from the people of Ghana, first and foremost, and above all, from our mental health service users. Certainly, there's no way they can be here, and they would certainly not know the people who are behind all this great work. But I think I'm bringing you heartfelt Greetings from the service users, for which certainly they wouldn't have seen the light of day if what we're doing here and will continue to do will certainly touch their lives. But I think it's been a long history, and um, you've heard it all. The statistics is there for you certainly to analyze. And the frightening thing even of late, a team from Yale University, certainly, visited Ghana recently, and they did a countrywide survey, and they put the statistics at 19% of the population have some form of mental disorder. That is the latest statistics. Well, it's natural, like in any population. But then, as you are aware, Ghana is making strides, and very soon we'll move into the middle income level as a country, and it comes with its challenges. As the country develops, as the people get more, you know, wealthy, and as social activities multiply, so also are the challenges, particularly things that affect our mental faculties with the stressful way of life and everyday life, particularly in Africa. So yes. We've just scratched the surface. But let me say a big thank you to Prof. Parry, through whom and his trust that we've been able to establish this link as far back as 2006. Safin Health NHS Foundation Trust, we are very grateful. Mark, I think, is paying off today all the sleepless nights and the numerous calls and emails, exchanges. And all of you, certainly, we cannot thank you. But as I started by saying, we have a big task. We've started rolling up the programs. The challenges of rolling them certainly stimulates us to even do more. In about two years, we've already trained more if we were to do equitable distribution of the first badge of CMHOs and the second badge that will be graduating in August. We would have filled all the districts in Ghana. And that tells you how we are moving. Currently, we have 170 districts in Ghana. 42 new ones have been added. 
and from the statistics, we've covered already the 170 existing ones. That tells you how, in our mind, we want to move forward. If we have adequate space, certainly, we'll even train more because the market is there. Young and enthusiastic people who want to further their education, mental health is touching their spirit and souls, and a lot more want to be trained. With the medical assistant psychiatrists, those training in clinical psychiatry, certainly the numbers will be increasing. Part of the excuse is that there are not many in the first place. But the College of Health, formerly known as Rural Health Training School, and as the name even portrays, Rural Health Training School, we could not have really, really network with an institution other than Rural Health Training School, now College of Health. Because this is an institution that has positioned itself to train the workforce needed, particularly for service uh, provision in rural Ghana. And we are proud to say that all our graduates from medical assistants, from disease control officers, nutrition officers, oral health officers, health information officers, are seen in all communities and in all constituencies in Ghana today. So therefore, training a workforce in mental health for Ghana, we are already there because the training we give to the graduates, the education we give them, with the support from Hampshire and all of you, is going to consolidate what we've been doing over 40 years ago. The numbers of medical assistants who were enrolled into the psychiatry program certainly have been increasing. From 2005 to 2010, 700 medical assistants passed through the College of Health within the space of that period. And if that should continue in the next five years, that should tell you that we're going to have enough medical assistants who will then go into specialty areas like the clinical psychiatry. So even though we started with small numbers, it will have to increase and it will increase. The challenge, as you all know, is about mental health. The stigma, the unattractive nature of that discipline. And I think that is what we all need to add our voice. And that is why we are here. And in Ghana, we've been doing the lobbying. We've been changing the mindset of people to really be touched by the plight of the mentally disordered people. It could be any of us. It could be our relatives. It could be even a politician at the highest level. And I think it is important that we continue to support this. If we have an exit plan that by 2018, certainly, this project should be facing out for Ghana to continue in a sustainable way, then certainly the structures being put in place today will prove that. And it's important that we continue putting in the structures, making sure that we continue building the capacity. We sort of support people to be able to continue with this. But I would think that it's even just the first phase. Because as the society gets complex, as people get complex, certainly there will be many more subspecialty areas in the area of psychiatry mental health that we need to develop. We're talking about generalists. We don't even have enough for now. But as we continue getting more, then we should be able to even develop subspecialty areas so that at least the quality will improve. Who says we cannot have forensic psychiatrists like the type of Mark, <laughs> or old age psychiatry like uh, the type of Rosie? And I think when we are able to achieve that, then certainly we would have fulfilled the mission. Normally, I don't deliver long speeches, but I've been touched with what is happening now. And we want to say that, forgive me if I've presented something that is longer than my normal speeches. <laughs> but before I sit down, let me take this opportunity to thank all of you and to say that we need your support in all areas to build the capacity, both for the education and the training to continue helping the workforce once they certainly qualify. 
as Mark alluded to, and then first and foremost also to look into the future, to start thinking about subspecialty areas that certainly, like this country, will need not only the generalists, but with time, will need people who will be able to address specific mental health issues. Thank you very much. Okay, Dr. Jassy, thank you very much. I think you can see from Dr. Jassy's speech why we've been so successful doing what we're doing. He's a tremendous person. The important thing is the photograph, of course, as well as cutting the cake.